Okay, good morning everybody. I'm Giacomo Landeschi and I'm from Lund University. I'm uh, currently a researcher at uh, the Digital Archaeology Lab at uh, the Department of Archaeology in Lund. Uh, this is a laboratory that has been established uh, a few years ago to uh, develop, uh, to improve the quality of research in digital technologies to be used in support of uh, uh, of research both at site and at landscape level. So in, in this framework we have several uh, research projects going on in which we test the use of 3D and GIS mainly for the purpose of improving the quality of research and especially uh, also what I want to show with this, uh, with this paper today is the possibility of using the 3D inside in combination with GIS uh, to uh, try to address some specific uh, archaeological question uh, related to the case study that we are dealing with. So, uh, first of all, um, this paper is about a prehistoric site, so it's quite different from the previous case studies. We are in totally different uh, chronological context and geographical as well, because we are dealing with the data set uh, related to the uh, area located in the uh, Baltic uh, Sea. Okay. So basically, uh, as I said before, uh, let's talk a, a little bit about the, the purposes of this research, these, the research aims that we want to pursue by using this approach. First of all, uh, well, the, the idea was to use this approach to define new strategies, generally speaking, for uh, improving the quality of documentation of an archaeological site. Um, for us, there is no use of using uh, digital technologies if we don't have a specific archaeological question in mind. And so, this is why we wanted to test this, uh, this particular approach. Then, uh, of course, uh, one of the purpose of the research was to use a combination of digital tools for reusing and recontextualize all documentation, uh, because this particular case study is related to a prehistoric uh, cave that was excavated at the end of the 19th century. The documentation, the field documentation, was done 50 years after the excavation was conducted and was done with traditional method, with handmade drawings in the form of plants and profile uh, sections. And uh, we wanted to reuse this old documentation in order to try to provide a spatial context to the artifacts that uh, were uh, discovered in the frame of this excavation. But of course, the, the idea was to use this approach also to, uh, to try to test new possibilities connected to the combination of 3D and uh, GIS. And uh, in general, um, of course, we, since the, the, one of the purpose was to try to solve some archaeological problem, by using this approach, the idea is also to try to uh, generate new insight in the archaeological area of Stura Ferborg. Sorry for the pronunciation, I know that there are some sweets here. So. But uh, okay, uh, let's go on. And well, we start from this consideration uh, the, the importance of having. Um, yeah, archaeological information connected to the original context, context in which this information was written. So basically, uh, as some scholars uh, pointed out a few years ago, uh, the first understanding of an archaeological data set is totally related to the context being investigated. So it is extremely important for us uh, to uh, put in relation uh, the artifacts information, the information of the object being excavated with their original uh, context. So in this sense, uh, this is why we, we try to uh, uh, recreate this uh, uh, virtual uh, stratigraphic sequence uh, containing uh, the different artifacts and objects uh, collected during the excavation. Uh, it's important to say that this is still uh, an ongoing project, so there are some parts that need still to be developed, but of course this is just a presentation of some preliminary uh, results that were obtained in the course of this excavation, you know, of this uh, uh, data analysis operation. So, uh, 
this is basically the, the, the research context. As I said before, it's located in the Baltic Sea. It's, uh, uh, it's a prehistoric cave, one of the most outstanding prehistoric uh, sites in Scandinavia. It's a cave that has been used from Mesolithic time and uh, up to the modern age. Uh, and uh, the original stratigraphic sequence of this uh, cave that is located on a very small island south of the island of Gotland. Uh, the, the material uh, was containing this stratigraphic sequence that was excavated at the end of 19th century. And uh, it consists of a variety of different uh, uh, artifacts spanning from uh, pottery, uh, uh, bones, animal bones, human bones, so different categories of objects that were uh, uh, described in the record that was done, as I said, 50 years after the excavation was conducted. And the, the particular aspect of this documentation was the fact that uh, each artifact uh, was connected with uh, the, the layer in which it was excavated. Because the excavation was uh, conducted, uh, of course, not in a very scientific way, as you can see from this uh, very uh, nice picture from the, uh, from the time in which the excavation was conducted. Uh, but still, uh, um, at, at least the documentation was, uh, was done in a, I would say, in a good way. And uh, the excavation of the stratigraphic sequence was excavated with the method of arbitrary layers, of speed layers. So each layer was excavated with uh, a regular depth of uh, 30 cm each one, which is not a very uh, appropriate method. Uh, that does not consider at all uh, the, the stratigraphy, the differences between each layer, uh, no matter if it's a natural or a tropic layer. So, uh, in this sense, uh, it, it was not the most appropriate way to excavate, but still, this information allowed us at least to know, to associate uh, the, the information about the artifacts that were retrieved to their respective layers in which they were uh, retrieved. And that could, this kind of combination of data set could have been used uh, to uh, at least try to reconstruct uh, a sort of relative chronology of the different uh, uh, material that was uh, found during the excavation process. So, uh, basically, uh, we had to face uh, some problems. First of all, as I said, the, the methodology of the, ex the excavation, which was not properly uh, scientific. And the, the second problem was due to the uh, to the fact that the excavation, or the part of the documentation, the record were written and were published uh, just uh, 50 years after the excavation was conducted. So we had to uh, address, try to, uh, uh, to, to consider this problem in, the, in, the, in, our, in our project. But, of course, the, the idea was, uh, since the, the material that we have available, and that is uh, still available in, the, uh, in an antiquarian uh, repository in, uh, in Stockholm, uh, allow us to have a lot of information that could be used to try to spatially reconstruct the uh, stratigraphic uh, sequence. And especially we have some information uh, coming from the, the handmade drawings that were uh, done at that time, uh, some profile uh, that could have been used to try to reconstruct the stratigraphic sequence uh, in combination with uh, uh, an acquisition that was done in 2013 with the laser scanner of, of the entire of the entire cave. So the idea was to use uh, the spatial information provided by the laser scanning acquisition and the information provided by uh, the, the documentation, the original uh, documentation. So, as a first step uh, of this project, uh, we, we, we went through this uh, field acquisition that was done by our colleague Stefan Lindgren, and uh, that was particularly difficult because of the condition of the cave. The cave is a very uh, deep cave, it's uh, around 20 meters uh, deep inside and uh, it has uh, 
uh, height of approximately 8 meters, more or less. So uh, the, the main problem is due to the fact that, especially the most in the, in the innermost part of the cave, is complete, almost completely dark. And of course, the, 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 the surface of the, of the cave is uh, completely regular. Uh, Surface, so these were problems that uh, had to be faced in the process of uh, acquisition. But I, I, I'm not going into this uh, now. So um, what uh, what I want to uh, outline is the the fact that by using this approach, it was uh, possible to uh, have the, the the 3D model of, of the K that could have been used for uh, for the. Uh, at the further stage of this uh, of this project, and uh, uh, basically, as I said before, the idea was to uh, use this uh, uh, this three D model as a special reference for doing uh, uh, further uh, uh, analysis on and to try, in particular, to reconstruct the original stratigraphic sequence uh, as it was. Uh, uh, excavated at the time, uh, in the, uh, at the end of the uh, 19th century. So basically, we started from, uh, uh, from, this, uh, um, from this material evidence that is made by the cave, the stratigraphic sequence and the artifacts. This is the material evidence uh, that was, uh, uh, that is uh, at the base of this analysis. Then we try to integrate the 1940s documentation, the four of handmade drawings uh, and uh, uh, artifacts uh, uh, contained in described in the records with uh, uh, the cave, uh, the 3D model of the cave. So we the, the idea was to use the 3D model of the cave as a special reference to try to reconstruct digitally the uh, stratigraphic sequence by combining the information of the cave 3D model and information uh, contained in the profile drawing uh, of the cave. And as a further step of this analysis, as I show at the end, is the idea to connect the information about the artifacts to each single uh, spit layers that was uh, uh, that is supposed to be uh, reconstructed. So. Uh, Basically, the, the first step of the uh, GIS implementation was to import the 3D model of the, of the cave in a, in a 3D GIS. And nowadays, uh, this is one of the reasons we went through this project. It is possible, as we have shown also in, in other uh, papers, uh, it is possible to, uh, to combine a quite complex 3D model in a, uh, in a 3D GIS environment. Uh, uh, by using the, the 3D analysis extension uh, of ArcGIS. Here, the, the analysis has been conducted in ArcSyn. And uh, since we already had the information about some uh, GPS points that were taken at the entrance of the, of the cave, it was possible to uh, exactly locate the, the, the cave in, the, in its original uh, uh, space. And important thing, uh, as a part of this uh, of, of this stage of the project was to integrate information uh, of, of the cave 3D model with information about the surrounding landscape. We had this information from the uh, from the national uh, the Swedish National Cadastral Agency, uh, which provides uh, a lot of data set, the territorial data set for free. Uh, among these data set, we have uh, lidar information that will allow, uh, that allow us to uh, create a digital elevation model of the, of the island, so that we could uh, match together the, the 3D model of the cave in its surrounding landscape. Uh, because one of the main characteristics of this kind of approach is to span from um, uh, to, to present the project in multi scale and, in, of course, in a multi temporal perspective as well. And um, yeah, uh, then of course uh, the, the idea was to use the, the information provided uh, by the, the, the old drawings, the old documentation, and in particular we found out that uh, uh, the profile that was uh, uh, drawn at the, at the end uh, during the excavation process 
uh, was matching the, 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 the actual profile of the cave. So it was possible to integrate inside the, uh, inside the, the, the GIS uh, the, this combination of uh, data set of information. So the profile information with, uh, uh, with the um, cave uh, boundaries. So now uh, the, the link doesn't uh, work very well with the video, but uh, here you can see, okay, just five minutes. Um, here I will show the, some videos at the end just to show the, the process how um, it did work, but here you can see that uh, we, we managed to import the, uh, the profile uh, inside uh, uh, the GIS and to match the profile with uh, the 3D model of the cave. So at this point it was possible to uh, start digitizing the profile of this cave to create the three-dimensional points that were associated to value of elevation that was relative elevation compared to the uh, uppermost part of the stratigraphic sequence uh, and going down uh, 30 centimeter each one. So uh, finally uh, we managed to uh, recreate uh, uh, with 3D lines the original uh, interface uh, subdivision of this uh, uh, stratigraphic sequence and then uh, we use these uh, three-dimensional lines of the interface as a base for creating uh, uh, a, a series of different plans and then we made an intersecting operation among the cave and these three-dimensional plans that allow us to uh, uh, create the, uh, the, the original uh, subdivision of speed layers and then of course this is uh, uh, the last part of the implementation that was uh, an extraction between each one of these uh, uh, speed layers. So, uh, mm, just briefly I show uh, some video to better uh, make you understand how the process works. Um, in particular, uh, okay, this is, uh, uh, okay, it doesn't show up. And yeah, basically this is uh, uh, the part of the implementation of the, the digitization process of the of the 3D points. Okay, and uh, uh, well, this is uh, 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 the part uh, related to the uh, reconstruction of the 3D uh, layers. So I just show briefly uh, the last one which you will have a better idea of how we recreate the, the, the 3D uh, uh, speed layers. So basically we did this intersecting operation along this plane and the, and the, and the boundaries of the, of the cave. So, uh, so that we finally managed to uh, reconstruct this uh, uh, this original uh, plan as they were documented in the, in the original uh, site excavation. Of course, this is uh, uh, something that uh, we know uh, starting from the, the analysis of the information related to the original documentation. But still, it's something that uh, uh, can be used to create a connection between uh, this uh, data set and uh, information about the artifacts. Because, as I said, uh, according to the report, it is possible to know uh, the quantity of, and the, the type of artifacts that were connected to each one of these pit layers. So, um, just to conclude, um, this is, uh, this is still an ongoing project, so the idea is to try to further develop this, uh, this, uh, this project. And uh, in particular, uh, um, the idea is to try to uh, use this information to generate 3D maps of distribution of artifacts and to measure uh, the artifacts density per each category of object, for example. So this is something we are still working on and in particular uh, I want to thank 
uh, Victor Lustrom, which is, uh, is uh, our, uh, one of our students who is working for his master thesis on this project and so he will further try to further develop this uh, project in the next few months, hopefully. Thank you.